Hey folks, it is uh, busy on the homestead, really busy. Let me share with you guys what I've been doing over the last couple of days. And I'm going to go ahead and do an extra bonus. One of my viewers asked uh, about the layout of my farm. So I'm going to share with you guys the layout of Pine Meadows Hobby Farm and why I laid it out that way. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Pine Meadows Hobby Farm. I'm your host Jerry Hansen. Got a lot of uh, activities going on on the homestead because winter is really close. I mean really close. Uh, so yeah, I've been really busy harvesting the garden and getting items that uh, froze in the compost piles. I have two compost piles now. So one of the items I was able to harvest, a bunch of cucumbers at the end of the season here, uh, Halloween time, uh, I ended up pickling the rest of my cucumbers. And my wife really loves these uh, dill pickle chips. So these are my spice hot, spicy hot dill chips, dill pickles. Anyway, I'll leave a link down below and I'll leave a card up here on my recipe and how I Water bath can pickles. You, you just need a water bath can. And pickles are probably one of the easiest things to make. So while one jar goes into the refrigerator for our use now, the rest of them will go into our pantry uh, to use from week to week or month to month. Uh, same way with the green beans. So I'll go ahead and take them out to the pantry. And then while we're outside, I'll just share with you guys the layout of the homestead. All packed in within um, almost six acres of land that we have. But mind you, our land is got hills and valleys and crevices, so it's not all usable land as far as for um, building. But it's good for livestock. So I'll put my coat on. And if you guys didn't catch it, I had a sale yesterday. Um, I went and took down my uh, kiosk that I jerry-rigged and got five free doors off Craigslist and I got this free canopy uh, left over or left behind by the production team. Raw TV is the uh, production team that left it behind. They do Storage Wars, Naked and Afraid, uh, Bar Rescue, there's another production they do called The Gold Rush. In fact, the film crew that was here filming the reality show on our show that left the tent behind, they worked on they work on Gold Rush. So, uh, let me take you outside and share with you guys why I laid out the homestead the way it's laid out. It's a foggy morning out here at Pine Meadows Hobby Farm up in the Cascade Ranges. But placement of the home, which is a double-wide manufactured home that I purchased for $10,000 from a couple about four miles down the road, we had it moved up here after we bought the land. Uh, we had it set inside, I put it together, and it was a no-brainer where to place the house because there was an existing mobile home that was sitting here before. We had the septic, the well, all the hookups right here, including the power and the phone. So, and this is the most level spot on the farm. Now this other <clears throat> area is kind of level, but it has a slope to it and we can't build anything here and there is a reason. This right here is my front yard where you see the deer standing over there. That is actually the uh, sand filter system which is a type of system for purifying sewage water that's pumped up out of our septic catchment tank. It's pumped up here and then it drains by gravity down through pipes that are buried in this field. That's why we can't build anything up here, let alone have heavy livestock. You, you just don't put heavy livestock on your drain field. It'll destroy your drain field. So that's what this whole area is. This is my front yard. And uh, I keep this mode for fire um, mitigation purposes. And it also looks nicer. 
uh, it'll, oh, the green grasses will come in, it'll attract the wildlife, which is, that's what we want. But I also i am harvesting the dead and dying trees back here um, and creating firewood piles. <laughs> yeah, i got lots of them. Anyway, that's, that's why this part is set up the way it's set up. We've got the front, which is our drain field. Then we've got the home site. And then we got the parking area, which we, it was kind of level enough to park uh, our, the RVs that we've got and uh, other items that we've uh, accumulated over the years. So this is all we have that's actually level enough to be able to utilize just for us, for the family, for the, uh, the living space. Of course, it was an obvious choice to put my tool shed within close proximity of where I parked the car so I can keep my mechanics tools close by at hand. So that's why we positioned it right here at the end of the carport. So I thought this was an obvious location to place the garden. I really mapped it out cautiously uh, to figure out where to place everything when I first got to the property and I, this this just stood out to me to be a good and proper location for a garden because it's got a gentle slope and it's got uh, plenty of area this garden measures out to be 50 foot by 50 foot there is expansion room I can expand it but I think we'll just stick with the size we have because they have the fencing up and it's very effective against deer so far and uh, just we're adding more raised beds. I'm getting ready to completely rest uh, redo the whole back part, half of the garden, kind of make it look like the front half. Now, as far as the placement for the greenhouse goes, that was not my decision. Uh, that was actually done by um, Misty Rainey from Homestead Rescue fame. She decided to uh, collect all the windows that I had gifted to me from contractor friends and she built this greenhouse right here this is actually going to be my orchard and she put the greenhouse right in the middle of my orchard so i have an apple tree it's far enough away from the uh, greenhouse so it's going to grow and i ended up having to relocate the orchard to the back of the yard and the original location i had spot uh, specked out for the greenhouse was actually on the other side of that fence but I let the uh, crew do whatever they felt they needed to do because I gave them permission to do that. And it, in the long run, it worked out better because it's within steps of the garden. It also creates kind of a, a, a divider between my yard and the garden. And it, it just worked out for best. It was good foresight on their, uh, their part. Now, the homestead came with an, uh, a feature. It came with a pond, which... That was awesome for me because I always I've I've raised ducks for years since ever since I was a little kid. My first farm animal was a pair of ducks, and so I've always enjoyed ha being in the company of ducks. And with a pond within close proximity of my back porch, I can sit there and enjoy my environment. Now we come to the rest of all the outbuildings for actually the livestock from the farm. I wanted to put a fence up which separates the rest of the farm from the livestock because this is uh, almost six acres. It goes up through the mountains and I already intended to have a pair of milk goats, at least just a pair of milk goats, chickens, ducks, geese eventually turkeys, and yes, even rabbits. So one of the reasons why I put my chicken coop there is because, well, when we bought the land, there was a nice level spot right there. I don't know what it was used for before, but I figured, you know, that's an ideal location to put a chicken coop because it's small enough uh, to fit the size of chicken coop I wanted to build. This chicken coop is... Uh, it's uh, six feet wide, 12 feet long, and probably nine feet tall. It, uh, it contains a nice little flock of chickens, and I built that. It was the first building I built on the homestead. In, in addition to the, the barn, I was doing that at the same time. So the chicken coop ended up there, and that's why I decided to put the chicken coop there, because of the little flat space. 
But then it's after I saw the chicken coop in the barn, I'm standing up here on my deck and wa uh, looking out over my domain as I do. And it's just like, you know what? I want to put everything in an order, like a path or a little village. That way I can sit on my deck and I can just uh, pan out over my little domain here and see everything. That way I can keep an eye on everything from my back porch. So it actually helps also with doing the chores. I do a, a, I have a pattern in which I do my chores. I hit the chickens first, I feed them and water them. Then the next thing I go to the buddy bungalow and I feed and water them. Then I have my tractor barn and my well up there. I just go up to the well and make sure that the uh, animal troughs are all full. Then I come over to the turkey pan and I hit the turkeys with some feed and water, make sure they're full of accommodating. Then right over here up to the barn, yep. That's my final stop. So I have a nice flow. In respect to my morning chores and my evening chores, it's just a nice casual walk, spend a few moments with my animals, come back, and my final stop is the greenhouse to water the plants. And then I sit on my back porch and maybe read the Bible uh, or whatever I'm going to do. Go take care of some things in the kitchen or around the house. Now that I'm retired, I got nothing else to do but go fishing, hiking, planning for next year. There's a lot of that going on. So that's how I laid out my homestead and why I laid out my homestead the way I did. Now when I got billy goats, I had to find a suitable location for them where they weren't in close proximity to the females. So that's why I put them over there, still able to see them from my deck. Of course, and there's the bees. I put them in a fenced off area for the chicken run. Uh, and that I figured they'd be safe from all other predators that like to get to honeybees. And it's worked, it's really worked well. And it gives the bees a nice open environment to be able to be free to come and go and not be hindered. And uh, it's easy for me to go and do my beekeeping from time to time also because it's just beyond the chicken coop. So um, right here beyond my garden and my yard, I have a 100 foot wide by 200 foot long swath of uh, fenced in land for the ducks and the geese to frolic. And then also for the chicken yard and then my uh, bunny bungalow and the also the tractor barn where I hold the tractor and protect my free tractor I got as a gift. Uh, and then I got the spot for the turkeys right here. So this whole little swath contains all the other outbuildings and free range for the ducks and geese and then also for the chickens. You know how I mentioned that the tractor barn contains the free tractor. I get a lot of stuff for free just by making connections with people and being kind being friendly and sharing and just enjoying their company so i was talking to this one gentleman the other day while i was down selling my art and he indicated that um he had this vehicle he wanted to give away it has a mechanical problem but since i know how to fix vehicles he decided he's just going to give me the vehicle i don't need another vehicle i really don't so what I did was, I went to grab my son and asked my son, you want another vehicle? Because you need a backup vehicle uh, in case one breaks down. And living out here <laughs> where we live, it's always wise to have a second vehicle on hand just in case you break down. Yeah. So just a little bit ago, I took my son down and uh, to this fellow's house. And this is what we ended up bringing home. A 1994 Ford Explorer, four wheel drive, free. Uh, something happened with the transmission. We put fluid in it, we drove it. So it turns out it's the transmission seal that is leaking and leaks some fluid out of it. So also all we have to do is drop the transmission because it's the front seal we'd have to drop the transmission and put a new seal on it but we're going to replace all the seals the filter and the uh, bottom seal when it's out anyway and get it all serviced put it back in and he has a decent vehicle for free so seals a seal kit for this plus fluid about 40 bucks maybe total uh to get this thing um 
It'll, it drives right now, just as long as you keep fluid in the tranny. <laughs> we can at least drive it down to the market and back. But yeah, a free car. I've showed you guys in the past a couple of other things I got free, but I passed them on to my kids. Um, I bought the Subaru uh, Outback and I gifted it to my son. And then I got this this uh, RV from an estate cleanup came with that flat that boat right there it's a porta boat I gifted that to my son also because uh, I ended up with this other travel trailer and I just get so many stuff for free anyway that's the story <laughs> and that's how the homestead is laid out with all of the stuff that I got yeah sold some art uh, laid out the homestead did some canning Got a free vehicle for my son, uh, do my morning chores, and it makes it so easy the way the plan that the, I planned out carefully all of the buildings on where I set them. Uh, and it just makes my workflow that much easier. Yeah. I'm Jerry Hansen, your host. This is Pine Meadows Hobby Farm. Please stay tuned to more videos. You could do that by subscribing and clicking that bell icon. That'll let you to new videos as I upload them. Give us a thumbs up. Click that share button. Uh, leave a comment, if you will. Remember, be safe. Always be kind. I'll leave some uh, cards up in the top and some uh, links down below on the different things that I shared with you guys today, like my canning, my pictures, and even how I bought the land cheap and how I got this house for cheap. Yeah, I built the homestead for free. Yeah! <laughs> bye bye now.